Can you, can you say again, please? Two years ago, I pleaded with God to give me his heart. Since then, my husband and I have experienced a series of heartbreaks. Today, I had a CT scan performed at Hopkins because of a suspicious nodule on a chest x-ray. My breathing has worsened considerably. I am still suffering with presumptive MS of over 30 years. Why has our suffering escalated and in a state of perpetuity since praying this prayer? My experience has been more in the medical field in the sciences and um, as a student of medicine, one of the things that absolutely blew my mind, one of the things that we took for granted quite regularly was just how finely hinged life is on the precipice of death. It, it's just, we so take it for granted that we wake up every morning. What say do we have in waking up in the morning? We go to sleep and we wake up and it happens regularly and so we take it for granted. But there's nothing we do to make that happen cognizantly. And we think about momentarily the, the, the malady uh, that, that you mentioned, that you have the multiple sclerosis. We, we just act. So immediately we act. We see things, we can point to it, and it's so natural to us. We don't even think about what's happening here, that your brain and your nerves function as electrical <coughs> systems, and you have capacitors that allow a signal to go from your brain to your finger and for your muscles to work at the very fast rate at which they do. And those capacitors, if they stop working, these myelin sheaths, you get multiple sclerosis. Just one small part, a very complex system, can cause such devastating effects. And, and, and as, as, as painful as it is, I think one thing that you have probably learned is just how beautiful it is and how much people take it for granted when this amazingly complex system works the way it ought to. Something we take for granted every single day. And I know when I pray, um, early on when I began to uh, pray as a Christian, you know, I was a Muslim formerly, and part of my prayer was the five daily prayers. It was very scripted. Everything was scripted. The only thing I got to choose in my five daily prayers was which portion of the Quran to recite. So when I began to learn how to pray as a Christian, these improvisational prayers, I said, what am I supposed to pray? And I'd look at my hands as I'm praying. I'm saying, I've got ten things to pray about right here. unlike many of the rest of us will ever be able to learn it. But the other thing that I learned in the process of, of transitioning from Islam to Christianity, the other thing that I learned was that God, according to, according to Islam, we don't, know, we don't learn this. God did not stand apart from your suffering. He didn't watch you suffer and say, I want to see what she ultimately does. I want to see what way she finds for herself. God takes a look at our suffering and says, I cannot remain aloof from that suffering. I will enter into it. You know, Jesus could have come as, as, a, as a prince in, in, in a human sense. He could have come with power. He could have come at any time in human history. He chose to come at a very specific time when people had invented how to execute people the most painful way ever devised. The most humiliating way ever devised. God said that type of suffering, which goes beyond all other suffering, that's what I will choose to take on for myself. He entered into it. And why did he do that? Out of love for you. He didn't watch you suffer and stand aloof. He took that suffering upon himself so that he could show us what true love was all about.
And if there's something that I'm kind of wrestling with through all this, it's where does my faith need to be versus I as a believer and a real person where can I actually find my faith there is some chatter on the internet that that Nabil somehow denied the faith in the end. That is not true at all. I was with him almost every day. Um, in other words, do I need to perform? Do I need to say, I'm going to have this level of faith right now? And honestly, I don't think so. I think God understands where I am right now. And he comes alongside us in that. And he loves us and he gives us the strength for today. So that's where I am right now.